questions cut it down three questions that will change your life as i meditated on this word wow it really shook me i want to title today's message rich beggars turn to somebody and say are you a rich beggar put on the lights put on the lights ask somebody are you a rich beggar you can be rich but still a beggar and you can be a beggar but actually you are rich i repeat you can be rich and you still have a mentality of begging or you are a beggar but you have the mentality of a rich man ask your neighbor who are you i want to ask three questions number 1 who are you number 2 what are you carrying and number 3 where are you going ask somebody get up from your seat meet somebody and ask him who are you what are you carrying and where are you going who are you what are you carrying and where are you going who are you what are you carrying and where are you going one more time who are you what are you carrying where are you going amen and as an opening scripture scripture i would like to go to luke chapter 16 verse 19 to 22 luke 16 19 to 22 there was a certain rich man who was clothed in purple and the fine linen and fed sumptuously every day but there was a certain beggar named lazarus full of souls who was laid at his gate desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table moreover the dogs came and licked his souls so it was the beggar died and was carried by the angels to abraham's bosom the rich man also died and was buried that's it it's a beautiful story and because abraham's name is mentioned i don't think it's a parable i think it's something that really happened and today i want to see if there is any similarity between that beggar and we believers ask your neighbor is there any similarity between that beggar and you and me i tell you something about i want to tell you something beautiful about this beggar this beggar is a believer how many of you believe he is a believer how many of you know that he got saved because when he died where did he reach come on answer me where did the the beggar reach after death abraham's bosom so abraham is the author of faith abraham is symbolic of a man of faith when you say i'm abraham's son or abraham's daughter it means you are a believer so this beggar was a believer if there was a church maybe he will attend one of our churches but he was begging he wanted just some crumb of food every day he had an attitude he'll go there sit there and beg secondly he was sick he was not perfectly well he was sick so he used to ask i wish somebody is there to heal me 
he had a desire to be fed with crumbs not even with full bread even if i get a small job it's okay if i get 1000 dirhams i'm happy he was looking for jobs probably i don't know but one thing i know is a believer he got saved by grace he got saved but the rich man was not saved now when you answer look at this beggar's life this beggar didn't know that who he was he was looking at the circumstances no food sickness and he said i'm just a beggar and many of us are like that we might look at our circumstances and decide who we are i don't have a job you look at circumstances in this world and decide who you are and i'll never forget this experience i had when i was in the state guest house one day 5 years back no 8 years back i was in the state guest house and i had literally very little clothing very little food and i came across this passage where jesus is in prison and he's taken to pilot and the pilot says are you a king he says jesus says for this purpose i was born to be a king what i love about jesus it doesn't care what is the circumstances he knows who he is ask your neighbor do you know who you are secondly he said you know if i want the somebody came to save him one day he was being arrested and while he was arrested somebody came to save him peter drew his sword and cut the ear of the soldier saying i'm going to fight you're not going to be arrested he said do you know don't you know what i have listen put your sword back if i want i'll just say one word to my daddy in heaven and he will send multitudes of holy angels who will kill all these guys do you know what i am carrying and jesus knew his future so i want to ask you this question three questions i want to ask you who are you what are you carrying and where are you going what's your legacy you need to discover who you are you need to discover what is in you and you need to discover where you are headed to do you think you are just here for a job a nice job 20 25000 salary are you here just to earn enough money to build a beautiful home are you there just that you retire go to that home and die is that your legacy that this guy built a beautiful home he retired went to his home he couldn't even climb to the second floor he died in the ground floor that's your legacy what is your legacy who are you and what are you carrying you know there's a beautiful time about jesus there's something lovely about jesus multiple times he said who you was he said i am the way i am the truth i am the resurrection i am the door i am the bread of life i am the light of the world he knew who he was any time i'm born to be a king he knew who he was it doesn't matter the circumstances it doesn't matter who told him what he was he knew who he was once you know who you are circumstances will not shake you 
shake up somebody and say, you better know who you are. If only you discover who you are. I, it took me years to discover who I am. I'm a fantastic dad. I'm a very loving husband. I'm called to be an apostle. If you ask somebody who you are, I'm a doctor. No, that's what you do. That's your profession. That's not what you are. You may be an ordinary doctor or you may be an anointed doctor. Shout amen. amen. Ask somebody, who are you? You may be a teacher or you might be a spirit-filled teacher. Who are you? Somebody said, I'm a child of God. No, you need to be a son of God. Stop being a child and grow up. Shout a hallelujah. If you agree with me, put your hands together, give him praise. You're not a baby. That was when you were born again. Now, how many years in the Lord? You're a mature son of God. Who are you? One day a woman divorced four times, living with the fifth man, the Samaritan woman, comes to Jesus. Told him, if you ask somebody who you are, they say, I'm an Indian. If you ask uh, Malayali who you are, he'll say, I am from Kodikod family or whatever family. If you ask John Uncle, who are you? He'll say, I'm Teteyil family. They'll say their family. They'll identify themselves with their family name. Some people will identify, oh, I'm a Madrasi from Madras. Some will say, I'm from Trishur. We guys love pork. So the Samaritan woman, John chapter 4. John chapter 4. And let's read from verse 15. The woman said to him, Sir, Give me this water that I might not thirst to draw. Now, before that, let's go to 10. From 10, we will read. 9. Then the woman of Samaria said to him, How is it that you being a Jew? So this woman said, This man is a Jew. And what did she believe she was? She said, I am a Samaritan woman. So most of us identify ourselves with the nation. If you are from United States, you say, I'm a US citizen. If you're from India, you'll say, I'm an Indian. If you're from Pakistan, you'll say, I'm a Pakistani. This woman said, I'm a Samaritan woman. You are a Jew. For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Look at what Jesus said. Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. So Jesus knew who he was. He called himself a gift of God. How many of you know that you are a gift of God? If you believe that, shout amen. amen. Tell somebody, I am a gift of God. I want to tell you something. You are precious. You are so valuable. And you are a gift of God. Discover who you are. You yourself are a gift to this world. You are a gift to the world. Jesus said, if you knew that I am a gift of God, you would come to me and ask me for living water because Jesus was not only a gift of God, he had gifts to give. He knew who he was at all circumstances. 
and he knew where he was going he knew his destiny he knew where he was going clear minded he knew who he was he said i am the way the truth and the life i am the door i am the bread of life i am the light of the world he knew who he was i am the great i am and secondly he knew that he was carrying gifts and the greatest gift he carried was eternal life he came to give eternal life he came into this world not for himself but he came to distribute a gift and that gift is known as eternal life number 3 he knew where he was going very clear he knew that he was not here to live for 60 years or 70 years he was not here to build a kingdom in this world he was not here to build a beautiful house and buy a mercedes car he was here with a purpose and once his purpose is over he's going back and he knew where he was going in john chapter 14 verse 2 to 4 in my father's house there are many mansions if it were not so told you i go to prepare a place for you he knew where he was going he knew his legacy he knew his destiny so today i want to give you a prophetic message and if you want to receive it shout amen, amen. and the message is all about three questions and it concerns you number one question who are you number two question what are you carrying what are the gifts that you are carrying in you everyone has a gift in fact god created the whole universe with a gift god created a fish with a talent the fish can swim god created a monkey with a talent a monkey can climb how many of you know that he doesn't create anything in this world without a gift it is a inherent gift with which you are born you are born with a gift if you want to receive it say i receive it shout amen, amen. you are born with a gift inherent even before god created you he knew that there's a purpose and he put the gift inside you so the fish you don't have to teach the fish how to swim just put it in water it will swim but you can't put the fish onto a tree and say climb i'm going to educate you you little fish i'm going to teach you how to climb that was not the purpose the whole educational system has to change believe me you can't put somebody who doesn't like mathematics and put him in class and say you idiot you're not learning mathematics learn that's what the educational system is doing now everybody same class you better learn this guy mathematics look like greek for him my, my, my god he hates it but you will trust it down his throat and say learn mathematics but that kid might have the talent to paint i don't know he might if you develop him he might become such an intel i don't know he's got a gift my god how many of you believe that turn to somebody and say you got a gift i don't know whether you're a fish or a monkey but you have a gift everyone has a gift when god created you he created you with a gift this beggar didn't know he thought he was just a nobody he had to depend upon this rich man he said if only this rich man gave me a job for 1000 dirhams i wouldn't have to beg 
I don't know why he was sitting at that gate all the time, looking only at the rich man, Moshe Lonorobo. Some of you look at human beings and say, if only I had a job, if only I had this, and you were crying all the time, begging. When God has created another gift in you, and you're not destined to beg at that rich man's counter. I believe this man didn't know who he was, what he had, and where he was going. If you agree, say amen. amen. Turn to somebody and say, you're rich. One more time, you're rich. People are not looking for you. They're looking for what you're carrying. Till Sachin can play, he's a hero. The day he cannot hit centuries, he's become hold, he's a zero. It's not that they love Sachin, they love the way he plays cricket. My brother, my sister, what is in you, what you're carrying is what gives you value. Not you. The world gives value for what you are carrying. Have you seen anybody giving job salary for somebody incapacitated? No. They don't. Now listen, note it down. There are seven human needs. There are many, but I'm going to take seven human needs. Seven human needs. Every person sitting in this place, you have this need. And because you have this need, you can go begging. And you can be a beggar because you have this need. Just like this beggar went and asked, can you give me some crumbs? And you can go to the wrong place and beg for it and spend your lifetime and go to heaven as a beggar. Number one is love. Everybody needs love. Tell your neighbor, everyone needs love. Huh? Is there anybody who doesn't need to be loved? Everyone. And if you need love, some guys, when they don't get love at home, they'll go to their girlfriend. Saying, my daddy don't love me, my mommy don't love me, but sweetheart, you love me. <laughs> so what are they looking for? Where are they looking for love? Outside the home. This girl will be nice to him first week, second week, till the day he gets, she gets married. Then you find out, I, my God, I married a monster. <laughs> Looking for love. Everybody needs love. Put it down on the screen. Number one, seven essential needs. Human needs, seven essential human needs, number one is love. And God knows. God knows you need it. God knows not only you need, you know something? Even animals need love. Plants need love. The earth needs love. For God so loved the world, He gave a gift, Jesus. Jesus is a gift not only to humans. Jesus is a gift to all creation. Because the world is looking for him. Only thing some don't know. The Bible says, because the world is looking for him, God so loved. Number two. Number two, you're looking for security. Right? Security. Security. How many of you want to go 
work in Syria now. We will give you $10,000, but your job is in the midst of a war zone area where they put chemical weapons. How many of you are ready to go? $10,000 per week salary. Turn to somebody and say, I need security. The second human need is, you need security. Jesus said, let not your hearts be troubled. Don't, be, don't worry. I'm going to prepare a house for you. Even if you don't have a house, I'm going to prepare a mansion for you. I will give you security where you don't have to pay electricity bill, water bill, rent, mortgage, nothing, free. Everybody now, you want to get relationship in this world, you should know these seven things. What are people looking for? You want to be a good pastor, you want to be a good leader, you want to be a good person in your workplace, in your business, you should need, know these seven things. What are people hungry for, looking for? That's why I know that people need love. Wherever I go, I will hug people, I will love people, I'll kiss people, or I'll give them love and they'll say, wow. Everybody needs love. Tell your neighbor, don't be stingy. Number two, people need security. Number three, people need value. I call it honor. You can call it significance or importance. Everybody is valuable. And I apply it to the least. You go to a prison and tell the prisoner you're valuable. If somebody is working with you, don't treat them just because you're giving some salary. Don't treat them like some useless people. Treat them with value because everybody is valuable. So you start to treat People who work in your office bring tea. You know, there's one person I hug always, every day. Not even my wife. It's Sanjay. You ask Sanjay, back in the office. I hug him every day. I tell him, you're valuable. Because one day, he will become a pastor. You start to give value. There's nobody who's not valuable. Everyone is valuable. Jesus said, are you not of more value than these lilies and these birds? For Jesus, one soul is more valuable than the whole world. That's the value he attaches. Number four, people are looking for peace. Everybody say peace. What are they looking for? Come on, leave me alone. I need some. Give me some space. I need some. Stop arguing with me. I need some. No, no, no. I'll eat your head. Tell your neighbor, give them peace. How many of you want trouble? Stress? Fight? No, you want peace. And Jesus said in the world... You'll have tribulations, but I give you peace. I am the prince of peace. Number five. Everybody wants to know their meaning in life, their purpose in life. Many people think everybody needs a job. No, 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 no. I'll tell you, employment is one of the greatest curses in this century. I'll prove it to you. Just like the educational system, I am not in line with them. Purpose. Everybody needs a purpose. I wish when kids are young in school that 
purpose for their life is established in them. I wish I knew the purpose of my life early in school. Purpose means, why did God create you? What's the meaning of your life? Why are you living? Just to bring up a few kids? Just to get them married? Why are you living? What's the purpose of your life? Why did God create you? Number six. Success. I call it achievement or fulfillment. Success, achievement, victory, fulfillment. You, you know, everybody wants success. And the time they fail, they say, my God, I failed. It brings them down. Failure brings down people. Because everybody has an essential need to succeed to succeed. Number seven. Everybody is looking for power. What is that? Power. Seven essential needs of every human soul. Seven needs. Number one, love. Number two, security. Number three, value or honor. Number four, peace. Number five, purpose in life. Number six, success. And number seven, power. And Jesus said, wait. Tarry till you are endured with power. Because I know you need power and I will give it to you. He said, in me, you will never lose. You have victory, success all through. But these are the seven areas that people are beggars. You're begging for love. The moment your daddy, mommy, wife, husband, somebody, friend doesn't love you, you're dejected in life, you give up. Reading the Bible, hey, my mommy didn't love me. She shouted at me. I don't want to read this Bible anymore. Begging human beings for love. I know that there are not people like that in this category. But if you're there, stop begging for love. Tell your neighbor, today I'm going to stop begging for love. How many of you know, you know, I've discovered one thing. The best thing to do is receive love from God. The more you're filled with love from God, you don't care. Somebody loves you, somebody don't love you. You will overflow and give the gift of love to others. It's people who don't have the love of God that are craving for love. And they seek it. Say, Pastor, my husband doesn't love me. But God loves you. So what? <laughs> Hang him <laughs> if he doesn't love you. And you love him. Number two, security threats. I don't know, next week I might lose the job. So what? The boss of all boss is on top. Ask your neighbor, are you worried? Is there security threats about your job? Money? I don't know how I'll pay. It's insecurity. The moment you have some of the people, the moment they have some 20,000 in their bank account, they are very nice people. The moment that 20,000 hits 10 dirhams, they can become nasty because they need of security is in money. Their security is not God. Their security is money. As long as money is their job is their hallelujah, hallelujah, beautiful. They'll dance. The day the job goes, they won't dance. When your bank account has gone into a coma, oh my God, you become a terrorist at home. 
today god is saying change your habit tell somebody change your habit i'll come to habit just remind me yeah? i'll come to habit number 3 3 are you begging for job i don't have job are you begging number 3 significance these people if they don't get significance they become proud because what they don't have they'll say i have why do you think i dress myself nicely wear a cap significance i want to be significant for that some people will wear all kind of color rainbow dress have you seen ladies wearing rainbow dress hat with a yellow color and a pink and a green scarf if they come you will be known they want significance when you see such people they are dying for significance they are looking and those who don't get the right kind of significance will become proud and they'll start to boast because they want significance they will beg for significance such people if you flatter them my god oh you flatter them little they will become in malayalam kombangu veluda and i've been seeing in india you go pastors given toppi one crown you want to give significance like politicians there no difference between a politician and a good pastor both of them need all kind of decoration significance because they are looking at the wrong place peace are you begging for peace please leave me please for the next 2 hours don't talk to me peace i just want just they think that peace will be when the wife is sitting quiet you when you open your mouth my peace is lost just shut up i'm talking to somebody here shout amen when you open your mouth i heard the dialogue it happened last week in this church somebody said this and they're looking for the wrong place for peace you know something you can have all kind of tribulations you can have chaos everywhere and you can be peaceful because the peace has not come from external the peace has come from internal the peace that god gave you is not the peace that the world will give you i don't know i'm working why i'm working life is useless life is meaningless every day i go at 8 o'clock i'm going to working and i am just working for you and your kids somebody else said this this week all that i'm working and this particular girl doesn't need your money your work it needs one kind word oh sweetie pie baby doll one work you come back after work he wants one nice tap it's not your money she needs love at least women say amen don't you know whole day i am working only to earn some money for you and your kids ask your neighbor are you begging for peace and i'm so sad to say many people drift away into life just working some work without meaning dead work meaningless work the definition of success is some money which will fly Are you begging 
for a purpose in life. One failure finished. One failure. And notice this is a trend. One failure. Then there will be so many advocates who will stamp you with failure and say, don't dare try again. You failed in the past. You failed the second time. You failed the third time. You are a failure. They will not say in these words, but this is the message. This is the message. And this person feels like a total failure. He says, I am a failure. Shout a hallelujah. Are you begging for success? One day, one man came and said, I like the power that is in you. I'll pay you some money. Can you give me the power? Power doesn't come with money. Are you begging for power? Yes, pastor. I will lick your shoes because you are anointed. How many of you know that you don't have to lick somebody's shoes to get? You're begging for anointing? Sit in God's presence, you will be anointed. Come close to God. The one who anoints is not your pastor, it's your God. How many of you believe this? All of you are so quiet, something is happening. <laughs> Ask your neighbor, are you begging? Now listen, how many of you want to change? How many of you are ready to change? I don't know about you, I want to change. And I want to give you some solid suggestions for change. If you keep doing the things that you are doing and continue to do them and expect different results, you are making a mistake. You need to change. And the one thing that you need to change is your habit. Your habit decides your future. There is power in habits. I've learned over 25 years, there is power in habits. You change your habits, I guarantee you, God will change your destiny. Become angry with your bad habits. Be discontent with your wrong habits because when you're discontent, when you're fed up with your habits, that's the seed for change. I tell you some good habits. Pray for at least two to three hours a day. Get up and see what happens to your life. One habit. It, you make it a habit, get up at four, five in the morning, pray. Every day, make it a habit to pray on Friday night. Two weeks, Friday night. Hallelujah! Third week, I have to find where did this guy go? You have to make it a habit to pray, to fast and pray. And let me know if God doesn't change. Prayer should become a habit. Reading the Bible should become a habit. Going for missions should become a habit. Doing good should become a habit. You should practice doing good on a daily basis. Loving your enemy should become a habit. I didn't hear amen. amen. And those of you who want to receive, clap and receive. <laughs> Prayer should become a habit. Fasting should become a habit. Reading the Bible should become a habit. Smiling at somebody should become a habit. How many of you know that smile is a seed? Yeah, you show. That other person will think that what kind of grumpy guy I am. But you smile, keep smiling. It'll catch on. 
Shout hallelujah. Some bad habits that you can break. Smoking is a bad habit. I used to have a habit of smoking. I had to break it. Drinking intoxicating drink to get high is a bad habit. Begging is a bad habit. Eating is a bad habit. Some people, if you give them a plate, they will conquer a mountain. That's a habit now. Listen, I heard this from a wife who was reading and telling me something and I caught on. And she told me, listen, pastor, if you cannot fast and bring your tummy under self-control, then what are you talking about bringing demons under control? First, your eating habit has to be under control. If you agree with me, shout hallelujah. Break your bad habits. Because your habits will decide your future. If you get into the habit of having intimacy with God, I guarantee you, all that you need will be supplied to you. Above what you need. Who are you? Ask your neighbor, who are you? Number one, you are not you. Christ is in you. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20 to 21. I have been crucified with Christ. I wish somebody said this every day of their life. I tell you, you just confess this three times a day. For the next 21 days, your life will change. Because something will die. And that thing that dies is known as self-idolatry. Because you have become an idol. Me. Me, I, everything about me. I have been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I. You know who you are? You are a child of God, but God wants a mature person to come out of you. He wants to see Christ, not you, in you. He wants to smell Christ, taste Christ, feel Christ. If you, you know, the best compliment I ever get in life is when somebody tells, listen, somehow when I come close to you, I get the love of Jesus. Wow, that's enough. I've I, more than anything else. That's what I love. People should see Jesus Christ in me. Good news, Christ lives in you. If anyone is in Christ, is a brand new creation. All things are passed away. Behold. Everything has become new. He said, it's no longer I who live. Who are you? Who's living in you? Ask your neighbor, who's living in you? Who are you? You are another representative, ambassador. Instead of Christ, it's you. It's all about him. And you cannot be a true disciple unless you lay down your full life and say, it's all about you, Lord. Not 50-50. Little bit me, little bit Jesus Christ. Number two, what are you carrying? Now, this is an important question. Colossians 1, 24-27. Christ, you carry his anointing. I now... Rejoice in my sufferings for you and fill up in my flesh what is lacking in the affliction of Christ for the sake of his body, which is the church, of which I became a minister according to the stewardship 
from God which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. The mystery which has been hidden from ages, from generation, but has been now revealed to his saints. To them God will to make known what are the riches. You are rich with Christ. Turn to somebody and say, I'm rich with Jesus Christ. The Son of God is in me. Christ, the hope of glory. Listen, you are rich with Him. You are rich in Him. You are not a beggar. You are rich. You are rich. I repeat that. How many of you want to receive this word? Say, I am rich. I am not a beggar. No more. I am not going to beg for love. I am not going to beg for peace. I am not going to beg for money. I am not a beggar. I am rich in Christ. Those of you who believe, clap your hands and give Him praise. How many of you pay rent to the landlord? You pay, no? Why is he landlord? Because he owns the land. If he owns your building, he's still known as the landlord. He owns the land, you pay rent. I have good news for you. He is the Lord of Lords who owns heaven and earth. And the Lord of Lords lives in you. Don't tell me you are not rich. Say I am rich. In Him. You are greater than your landlord. If you can believe. To them, God built to make known what are the riches. Everybody say riches of the glory. Of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Now listen, this is the hope of glory. The hope of glory is that anytime you suffer, it can be exchanged for glory. Anytime you suffer, you can exchange it for glory. All your failures, all your mistakes in past, shame, rejection, anything you have gone through in the past, anything that you made you suffer can be converted. Only you need faith in the Son of God. You can exchange it for glory. So none of your past suffering will go wasted. Shout a hallelujah. Now once you get the revelation, you know something? You can buy it from God. You can say, no, Lord, I had only two churches, hardly three fellowships, one in Rasul Kema, one in Sharjah, one in Abu Dhabi. Total put together a few people and you are in prison. You can say, I'm suffering, but I want to exchange this for glory. He will multiply missions. You don't have to do anything. He'll do it for you. Because you can change. If you had financial problem, no problem. Exchange it. You'll become blessed. There's nothing that God cannot give it back. Shout Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Even if you take the case of Job, God restored Job. So what about you? Ask your neighbor. Stop begging. Start exchanging. Say, Christ lives in me. I'm carrying Jesus Christ. Not only you're carrying Jesus Christ, you're carrying an inherent gift. This, right before he, your mother conceived, God put this gift in you. And after putting the gift, he sent you into this world. When you were born, 
you're born with gifts if a bird is born to fly if a fish is born to swim if a monkey is born to climb my brother my sister you're born with the gift of god if you believe clap your hands and say i'm born with a gift you came to this planet earth loaded with talents it's in you hidden you're loaded you are a loaded bullet ready to shoot matthew 25 verse 14 to 30 and to one he gave one more time how many talents tell your neighbor maybe god has given you five talents there's nobody he didn't give talents and to another he gave two talents and to another he gave one but i don't read in the bible that god sends somebody into this world without a talent so you have a inherent talent you loaded with talents and god expects that you will use the talent for the benefit of somebody how many of you seen good pakistani mangoes lift your hand tasted pakistani mangoes sweet badam badam mango right now when i say badam it is tasting you already but in the mango is a seed so the mango was created with the talent and the talent is the seed in you there's a seed in the seed of the mango is a tree the tree is also loaded with talents leaves the leaf is loaded with talents because it will receive uv light from sun and give oxygen that's why in your house you should have lots of natural plants that's good for your children lots of plants because plants give oxygen there's a talent there's a gift in the leaves and the mango tree has got a gift and that's the mango it's a it's a circle you came into this earth loaded with gifts those of you who believe shout hallelujah hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah. tell your neighbor i'm gifted i am gifted and the gift god gives one person is not the same as the other i don't have to try to imitate pastor anison and say everybody every 2 minutes you clap no i don't have to do that i can be elias myself my own style he can be anison somebody else can be bernard blessing i don't have to imitate anybody god has created me loaded tell your neighbor you are loaded with gifts what is a gift it is a capacity to fulfill a purpose you're pregnant mosho lo no robo reke tele ne re bende ne re bese ronko tolo no robo he de le ne re be say i'm pregnant some of you here sitting here you are almost on 9 months pregnancy you are about to deliver you know that you can't sit quiet anymore like this i need to deliver something how many of you are there lift your hand tell lord lord i'm pregnant with your gift i'm pregnant say that i'm pregnant 
and I'm about to deliver. Help me, Lord. I need to deliver. So gift is something, if you have the baby, you can't keep the baby unless you deliver, otherwise you'll die. You're rich with talents and gifts, with hidden potential. There's extraordinary potential. Don't waste it sitting at home, doing nothing. Sit at home. Kao pio marjao. What are you doing? Nothing, brother. I applied for a job, no job. Nonsense. I had no Emirates ID. I had no job. I applied, nobody replied. So what? I found myself something to do. You discover something to do. Is job the only word to earn money? I'm asking you this question. Is job the only way to earn money? How many of you believe it is only one way? Job. Unless I am employed, there's no money. Those of you who believe that, lift your hand. I want to cast the demon out of you. Job is not the only way. Everybody is looking for employment. If you don't have employment, create one. If I don't have work, I will create work. I didn't hear amen. You know something? People are paying for solutions. And you are a solution. They are not paying for you. They are paying for the solution. They are not paying because you are beautiful. No. <laughs> they have a problem and you have the solution. You give the solution. They will pay you. Listen. Somebody wants to be transported from Ajman to Uz Pakistan. You have a car. Tell that guy, listen, can I do your help? I will transport you. Free. First day he'll say free. Second day he'll say, no brother, I want to do something. Can I pay you 500? Come on, start. You created, you solved, find out, look for problems and you become the solution. Money will come to you. Stop looking for jobs. I said employment is a curse. Because people are looking only for jobs. They have been cultured. They have been trained to think job is the solution. Job is not the solution. Solution creation is the solution. I didn't hear amen. You have to identify problems and provide solutions. You will be paid. Right now, I need a fantastic team here. I need musicians. I will pay. I need a solution. Everybody has, there's enough problem in the world. You can create a job for yourself. Hallelujah! Hallelujah. I like you, man. Tell your neighbor, you were sent in this earth to release your hidden potential. You are not a mistake. You have a solution to offer. Now those of you who believe, put your hands together, give Jesus the best. <laughs> Tell somebody, I'm not a mistake. I went to a house in USA. They accommodated us. And Annie and I were there, and early morning, 6.30 in the morning, they'll take a big, you know, in the United States, they don't drink coffee like this. I don't know how they drink coffee. They drink such a big mug, pump, and they're gone. Early morning, they drive husband, one car, wife, one car, beautiful car, beautiful house. So after two days, I asked, where did you go? Six o'clock in the evening, she'll come. I said, you want to know? Come. She went, she opened her boot of a car. I saw cleaning materials. This lady is around, I think around 55 years old. She's going to office after office, 
cleaning offices i wanted to salute her it's not some undignified job it is better than begging for jobs it is better than begging for money it is better to clean and to earn some money she was providing a solution there's no job undignified no job it's your pride i have to get a 20000 dirham job otherwise i will not take it first take the 500 dirham job he will give you the 20000 you were created with a gift identify your gift the gift of god is in you not only christ but there's a gift in you and the gift will make you valuable serena williams is valuable because she's got the gift of playing tennis sachin is valuable because he's got a gift and he's polished that gift is very good at that gift i don't know what gift is in you you have to polish it use it and trade it your gift will give you the income what is that gift in you you need to discover what gift is in you and you have to become excellent in that one thing if your gift is just to make fish pickles you should be the number one fish pickle making person in dubai supply 100 fish pickles free that's your investment next time they ask you say listen this cost money pay me 10 dirhams per bottle i know stories after stories people who use their gifts one small gift and you become a millionaire what is the gift in you ask your gift makes you valuable your gift is your wealth you can do business with it is that i have given you five talents trade with it trade with it what is the talent in you discover your gift and you will discover your wealth write it down discover your gift and you will discover your wealth and if you do not discover your gift you will die like that rich beggar how many of you want to die your christian life like that rich beggar he had faith he had christ in him but he died a beggar because he didn't discover what is the gift in him ask your neighbor what's your gift the gift will maintain you will provide for you the gift in you will maintain you will provide for you the gift in you will maintain you will provide for you the gift in you will maintain you will provide for you there is enough in you for god to make miracles you don't need anything more than what he has already gifted in you for god to do extraordinary miracles what do you have five loaves two fish that's enough that's all what you have that's enough in my hands what you have is enough for the miracle How many of you believe this? Shout a hallelujah. hallelujah. Say I have enough in me gifts of God to make me a millionaire. How many of you believe this? There's a time I came out of the state guest house with 18 million there arms debts but i believed one thing god will wipe away that and make me prosperous it's your mentality it's not defeated i lost so many times doesn't matter people say don't try it again doesn't matter because i know who's in me he will make me victorious 
If you shout that, say, I know who's in me. Everybody lift your hand and say, I'm packaged. Already, I have the gift of Jesus Christ in me and he's distributed gifts in me even before I was born. You're a package. You're a unique, beautiful, wonderful package. Tell somebody, you're unique and you're beautiful. Shout a hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 to 10. Ephesians 2, 8 to 10. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And that not of yourself, it's a gift of God. Uh, one minute, one minute, one minute, one minute. How many of you know that salvation is a gift? How many of you know that faith is a gift? How many of you believe that you had the faith to be saved? Only those people lift your hand and say, by faith I have been saved. Now keep your hand up and say, by faith I will be rich. One more time. <laughs> say, by faith God will fulfill all my needs according to his riches. How many of you believe that? But one thing you need to change. Your habits. You're, you're what you are because of some wrong habits. Better change. Change your habits. Change your pride. Change the attitude of your mind. Next. Not of works. Don't boast. Lest anyone should boast. Verse 10. I love this. Let's all read. One, two, three. Here we go. One more time. For we were his workmanship created in Christ for good works. For what? For what? What is your purpose? What is the purpose in your life? Listen, listen, listen. What is the purpose of your life? If any of you don't know, take this prophetic word. You are created for good works. Now say that. I am created. There's a purpose in my life. That purpose has got nothing to do with me. It's got to do with somebody else. I am created for good works. I don't know about you. I am craving. I am pregnant with good works. I want to go back to missions 12 months a year. I am pregnant. I am breaking inside with good works. Tell your neighbor, you are created not to be a nurse but for good works. You are not created to be an electrical engineer. You are created for good works. This electrical engineer nurse might be your side income, but you are created not for that. You are created for good works. In Christ. And started now, huh? before it's too late, Start it now. Don't wait for everything to be all right. Start it when things are not all right. Start. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works. And God before he prepared this and he's preparing the way so that you will walk in it. But you don't want to walk in it. You want to walk your own way. No, good works. This pastor will announce, carry it as what is wrong with him. Every time he has got only thing. I'll go my way. You don't know what I have to do, pastor. I have to finish my job. I'll be here. Job is so important, pastor. Without job, no. I will die without job. No, you will not die. Exodus 35. Verse 10 to 12. Exodus 35, verse 10 to 12. 
all who are gifted artisans everybody say gifted artisans among you shall come and make all the lord has commanded next the tabernacle its tents its covering its claps its bolts its bars its pillars its sockets now one minute everybody say that the tabernacle you know how many of you know that you are gifted to build the church you are gifted to build the church the new testament church there's nobody is sitting quiet everybody has to do a job and i give you open invitation to everybody you have a job and if i don't allocate the job there's something wrong with me i have to allocate a job for everyone everybody has a job i like you makai come here associate pastor come here from today he is the greeter we have appointed him to say welcome how do you say that should say that welcome to now welcome to the ocean of love this is how you say oh, hug me welcome to the ocean of love now that's his job if you come through the main door you're going to get a hug from him who else is ready to assist him you have to hug the person and say welcome to the ocean of love who's ready please come children below the age of 15 please if you want to participate in this job god will promote you you think you have the talent of hugging then just come all you need to do is hug and then say welcome to the ocean of love Who else? Come, come, stand here. Who else wants to say? Come, come, run, run, run. I want to see who else wants to say. Welcome to the ocean of love. Oh, Ryan, come here, Ryan. Ryan wants to come. Who else wants to come? Last chance. The gift is in you. You can not only hug, but you can also kiss. Oh, yeah. This here comes. The, Oh my god come here come here come here Say that Welcome Welcome to the ocean of love To the ocean of love Welcome to the ocean of love Amen That's all Everybody so these are the new angels ready to welcome you only thing you have to be here by 1:30 that way your daddy mummy also will come in time <laughs> please be seated turn to somebody at least three people and say listen change your habit you are gifted to build this church uh, shake hands get up get up get up get up you are gifted to build this church you're gifted to build this church you yourself are a gift from heaven in james 1:17 it says every good and perfect gift is from above an apostle is a gift a prophet is a gift an evangelist is a gift a teacher is a gift a pastor is a gift an administrator is a gift even the brother taking the video is a gift we have two beautiful gifts the one who's giving live television is a fantastic gift
every one of us we are a gift excel in your gifts and you will be promoted so first thing you discover your gift and excel in it be very good at it once you excel in your gift you promotion is natural proverbs 22 29 write it down you have to discover your gift and excel in your gift proverbs 22 29 do you see a man who excels in his work he will stand before kings he will not stand before unknown men you have to be a learner and you have to keep learning and you have to become excellent in your job the more excellent you are the greater your promotion you cannot be a mediocre no whatever you do you have to become number 1 in that work excel and you will be promoted you will stand before kings discover your gift and polish it like your shoes you have to polish your shoes that it shines like that you have to polish your gifts and god gives gifts he is happy to give gifts and that's entirely another class one of the gifts beautiful gifts is the gifts of the holy spirit he gives gifts of the holy spirit that you can excel any doctor and heal people 1 peter 4 10 to 11 as each one has received a gift minister it to one another as good servants towards of the manifold grace of god if you are good in speaking next verse let him speak the oracles of god if you you are a person who is very good in talking when you come home you 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 are 15000 words you have to speak it to your husband and this guy doesn't have the patience to listen don't waste your time and beg him please listen to me i have to talk don't talk talk the oracles of god to somebody else on the phone husband hang yourself pick up the phone call somebody speak the oracles of god till he comes and begs you shout amen if anyone speaks let him speak as the oracles of god if anyone ministers let him do with the ability which god supplies that in all things god may be glorified through christ jesus shout a hallelujah, hallelujah. now next one is so important i'm almost about to close god gives you gifts to do your business and your work say that lift your hand Say Lord I receive the gift and wisdom to do my work. Put your hands down. Exodus 31:3 to 5. Some people think gifts of the Holy Spirit is only to prophesy, lay hand on the sick. No, 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 no. You can have the same gift of the Holy Spirit to do business. Exodus 31:3 to 5. and i have filled him with the spirit of god this is the holy spirit in wisdom in understanding in knowledge and in all manner of workmanship to design artistic works maybe you are gifted to paint and your paint one painting will sell for 1 million dollars i don't know maybe you are gifted to do makeup and tomorrow karishma kapoor is going to call you and say come fly i want to give you half a million dollars just to do a makeup for me <laughs> say lift your hand and say i need wisdom not just in church at my work to do business give me wisdom the holy spirit
you can have ministries 1 corinthians 12:4 to 11 there are diversities of gifts but the same holy spirit there are differences of ministries but the same lord i can have a ministry in the prisons you can have a ministry with the teachers i don't know what ministry you have it doesn't matter use your gift start your ministry i can be i, I tell you this church is very encouraging when it was small somebody wanted to start at a malayalam church i said go start recently 2 3 years back pastor henry came he was not even pastor he was just a brother he said i want to start a fellowship go then he said i want to start servants of god go you want to start a ministry i'll bless you i'm not looking saying okay everybody has to be no you have different talents i'm here to be a coach and say go come on do it encourage you Romans 12 4-8 As we have many members in one body but all the members do not have the same function so we have gifted differently we are gifted the gift that is in me is not the gift in any the gift that is in any is not in me it's not just spiritual gifts i'm talking about all kind of gifts and talents god has given each one is wired with a gift discover your gift and last before i close matthew 5 14 to 16 and i close matthew 5 14 you are the light of the world turn to somebody and say you are the light of the world one more time said you cannot be hidden anymore say you are the light of the world how many of you believe you are the light of the world not just the church i'm going to pray I man i want to pray to activate to stir up the gift in you this week by the time you come back next week you should come and tell me pastor this is my gift what is the gift in you what are you wired to be last week when i saw nelly come and read wow what a gift she can write so beautifully and present it so well so that's the gift if i try to write the same way poetically i'm a little girl and all that it might be difficult I don't have to that's the gift in earth so each one of you have a fantastic gift and all that you need is gifted in you say i am rich i am rich in christ i will not beg any more how many of you want to change and say i want to change close your eyes close your eyes the holy spirit will speak to you what do you want to change what are the habits you want to change you want to change the habit and the first habit i want you to change is the habit of eating how many of you want to change your habit of eating and you'll start with a fast people who could never fast before this is your call don't say the holy spirit is not calling you this is me and i'm telling you whoever you are you find it difficult to fast today i recommend you stand up and say i need help fasting who wants to break the habit of eating and say i want to start to fast and pray and you'll start with one day 12 hours stand up stand up stand up Yes, beautiful. 
don't worry you will not die tell your neighbor you won't die but if you if you don't eat you you will not die if you fast good lift your hand lift your hand lift your hand to jesus you're going to change your habit you want to change some other habit and you want to change it you don't want to say what that habit is but you're getting an inspiration from the holy spirit the holy spirit is not change that habit it's not good for your destiny i can feel there are many here who need to change your habit and that will change your destiny if that is you i want you to stand up if god is speaking to you just stand up where you are and say i want to change this habit you need to become angry with your bad habits ugly habits you need to become upset discontent with your habits because that's a seed your anger towards that habit is a seed and that seed is going to give birth to to some fantastic results in your life and you want to start a good habit for the next 21 days you're going to build a habit a habit of prayer regular prayer a habit of fasting a habit of reading the bible at least an hour a day a habit of doing good a habit of doing missions a habit of smiling i don't know what habit you want to develop if that is you i want you to rise up also